Hey everyone, welcome back to my YouTube channel where we talk about project management and ClickUp and all kinds of fun things. Today we're going to talk about how to create a project Gantt chart and by the end of this you're going to see how to use the Gantt chart view in ClickUp and uh, we're going to demo it for a little apartment renovation project. So that's something that probably a lot of people have seen, will see, maybe it's a basement or you know just a small remodel project. So. Uh, you're by the end of that, by the end of this, you're going to hopefully see, you know, how does that work? How do we set it up? Gantt view, all kinds of fun stuff. I'll, I'll throw in a few other little things too. Why should you listen to me? Uh, I run Hydrant. I've been a project manager for over 15 years now. And uh, you can also, I want to point out, get the free guide. If you want to figure out how to do, see our, some of our best tips, practices, etc. Go ahead and get the free guide. It's for busy CEOs and teams. All right, let's get into it. So we're in our template space and I already kind of preloaded a little bit like in Claude, hey, help me with the basic project plan so I can copy paste them to click up. You can do the same thing. Um, and I wanted to kind of keep it fairly simple and uh, I'm gonna move this in. So let's, I think I could do a, a task with checklist for each one. I'm not gonna do that because uh, it'll take me a while and I wanna keep this video shorter. Um, so you can kind of just see more of the general like ideas. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna say, hey, can you do just the parent tasks with no numbering? And hopefully we'll get this back right. Okay, that's perfect. Okay, so now I'm going to copy. I think that worked. And then let's go into here. And I'm gonna create a new one. Let's keep using this pre-construction folder. And let's name this, um, let's come up with a good name. Um, uh, let's call it 102 Coulter Wall Boulevard, great singer. And we're just gonna assume this is this is it. And then what I'm gonna do, yeah, see it's saying like status is, let's just not even worry about that. I'm gonna hit control V, I copied over, and it's gonna say multiple lines detected, create 16 tasks. Yes, we want that. Okay, it takes a minute, and you can see it did give me one task that I didn't want. It's probably because I copied it wrong. Um, but here we have some tasks. Okay, so let's assume, okay, did I miss anything? Initial planning and inspection. Yep, sounds good. I think I might rename this to, I'm going to remove inspection. Let's just do initial planning because I don't want an inspection. We're not doing, let's see if we need, okay, if we're gonna redo the kitchen, yeah, and the bathroom, okay, yeah, we probably need a, a permit, so I'm gonna leave that, um, which means you'd probably need plans or something like that. Um, but let's just stick with this for now. I think what's beneficial about using something like Claude is it helps you get started in a project plan. So I might say, actually, um, we have obtained permits, we might say, Design documents 100%. And we might move that up. And so now the question is like, how do we order these and how do we get them in a Gantt view? Right now, they're, they're all just sitting here, undone, unstarted, whatever. If I go to Gantt view, which is, um, we kind of have the auto set up and you can always hit plus view. They have a whole wide variety of views you can choose from. But you can see now because there's no dates, there's no dependencies, there's nothing, there's no start dates. So we, like it's not gonna show you anything in Gantt view, right? So we're gonna go back to the list and I'm going to populate a few things here. One, show hide. I want date, I wanna see a start date. We've already got a due date. Um, assignees isn't really important to me. Priority is not really important to me. So I'm gonna remove those. And what I might do actually is, uh, I think I want, I wanna see dependency. So that seems valuable. We're gonna keep status as our grouping. And then I think that's all I really want. Um, I think that's enough. I might, you know, this is one of my favorite features. I always like latest comment. We're gonna throw that on as well. And then I'm gonna create a custom field as well. So I'm gonna create, it always, when you hit plus, it defaults to create field. So what I'm gonna do is a dropdown and subcontractor. And we're gonna say, uh, Teton plumbers 
plumbing, we're going to say A and A architects. We're going to say city of Driggs. Just for fun, we're going to pretend this is in Driggs, Idaho, by the uh, Grand Tetons. And then we're going to say, uh, you know, lighting, we might need an electrician. Let's call in Jackson E. Lighting. I don't know why they would name the company that, but let's just start here. And if I wanted to color these, I could, but I'm going to create that. And now we have our subcontractor in here. So let's just go through. I'm going to pause and populate this really quick. So I went ahead and populated the subcontractors. The assumption is that I'm doing a lot of the work, but for some of the more technical stuff like plumbing and electrical um, or the design, I'm going to have someone else do it. And then I left one blank because I'm like, wait, who's going to do the windows? I need to figure that out. I don't want to do the windows. I don't know how to do windows. Um, no matter how much time on YouTube, I can't seem to get the uh, windows done quite right. So I'm going to skip that. Next, I'm going to go through. I'm going to start adding start and due dates. And I'm going to go ahead and rearrange this so that start comes first. Oh, no. This click, this click thing is always getting me. Okay, so now I arranged it where we have start date and due date. And then we've got, I'm going to move maybe a couple other things around just so I can get this a little more clear. We've got some dependencies. Budget development, I'm going to work on that today as well. I feel like that's part of the planning. And in fact, I might actually combine those tasks if I wanted. Permits, okay, well, we probably can't do that until we get our design documents. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to add design documents. And hopefully they're, they already started. Okay, let's say... But I got to do the budget first. So, all right, I'm thinking, well, actually, probably can't get started on the design docs till the fourth. And then hopefully they only take two weeks. I'm being probably, it depends on your designer. Obviously, two weeks is pretty fast. Um, but this isn't meant to be complicated. And I already know exactly what I want. This is really just a permit set to go to the city. Okay, next, we can't submit for permits until we have those design documents. What I'm going to do here is I know that this is going to be dependency. So here, I'm going to add a task waiting on design documents. Okay. Now, I know that's a dependency. And it's going to show me here that we are blocked by obtaining permits. It's going to be blocking the, uh, the permits. And I could also add a dependency here where, honestly, I can't really start budget development until uh, I can't really start the design documents until I figured out a budget. So add task, waiting on initial planning. So I just added a couple of those in and um, I'm going to show you now what it looks like in Gantt view. So now you can see we have those initial tasks here, initial planning and budget development. And then you can see the arrow leading to design documents. And you can of course scale this out a little bit. Let's just make it a little smaller. Hit save. And now you can see we have a basic camp chart. So some people just like really wanna see it this way. Um, I think it can help. Um, you know, there's a, like we can auto fit here. That's kind of cool. You can obviously filter it out however you want. Um, and it's pretty powerful for the majority of projects. I'm going to say that. Um, I think, you know, you, you can obviously go into multiple layers if you want. If you turn on that click app, um, you can go to six or seven layers deep, I think, with subtasks. Um, so that can be useful. And you can set up a pretty complicated Gantt chart here. So this is a, a good tool if you like seeing it this way. This is great. Um, and obviously you're gonna see some colors happening as you go through the project. And um, you know, hopefully that puts you peace of mind. I think I'll call out another thing too, as we kind of go back to our agenda, is like when you start to pair something like Claude or ChatGPT and you start to use it in tandem with a tool like ClickUp, it's really helpful for project planning because it's like, hey, um, what am I missing? Um, and you can go through and give it more context and it can help you kind of 
figure out risks um, or how to manage them. Um, and so that's that's a really powerful thing to do as well. Maybe we'll go, what risks might I encounter? Note that I am doing the flooring and painting myself. Anything I should take note of. So if I'm new to this, I'm kind of like thinking about, hey, I'm gonna be doing some of this stuff myself. Okay, yeah, hidden damage discovery. This is a huge one. Oh my gosh, that's such a big deal. You just gotta be ready for that if you're gonna be do, doing any kind of renovation project. Okay, contractor scheduling. Um, yeah, so like do flooring after painting. This may seem obvious when you look at it this way, but this is just maybe you, you, know, you didn't think about it. You didn't do the project planning. So you might wanna add a dependency here where painting comes first and then you do flooring. So um, that can help you improve your Gantt chart. So hopefully um, after you go through it, you, you feel like you've got some peace of mind that you could just follow the schedule. Um, and obviously things will come up, but I would say the goal here is like try and keep to at least 80 to 90% of your, of your schedule um, because where I see a lot of project managers and you know projects fail is you spend too much time simultaneously planning and doing the work. And that can create a lot of problems uh, because you're, you're constantly switching views from close up to far out. And the reality is you wanna spend your time at the far out distance doing the planning. And then as you kind of go through um, for a few weeks or two weeks, or whatever it is, if it's a sprint, um, actually doing the work. And I think what's nice about doing effective planning and especially doing repeatable projects, like if you're gonna do a bunch of apartment renovations, you get really good at knowing where the risks are, how to set up the you know dependencies, you kind of get your list of subcontractors that you really like, um, and you can go from there. I'll point out one last thing and then we'll call it. I just wanna say like we can group these however we want. Um, so uh, right now, we're grouped on um, status, but if we want, we can totally change that. So if you go to customize, group by status, and said we're gonna group by subcontractor. Um, so this could be useful if you want to send um, specific contract specific reports, like with start date and due date, you could send these out to your different subs. So hopefully this is helpful, again, Get our free guide. This is really cool. We put it, spent a lot of time putting it together. And always reach out. Um, you can always find me. Um, find us at hydrant.us. We'd love to talk to you about your project. All right. Oh, one last thing. It really helps us if you subscribe. So if you find this useful at all, this work we did here in ClickUp, this is useful at all. Appreciate a subscription. Um, and we will give you plenty more content where this came from. All right. Good luck.